Hello, in this video I'm going to show active vibration damping and you can download the SolidWorks files for that over here. So here I've got the SolidWorks files that you can use in SolidWorks Motion that is in SolidWorks uh, Premium Bundle. You can use it to recreate the analysis that I'm going to do in this video. So in this link I put as well the files of the passive as for the uh, active vibration damping. So I'm going to discuss the active vibration damping in this video first and that's for example a machine that shakes and causes a force on the floor so that's why it's called active vibration damping because it's the machine itself that shakes so I've got the SOLIDWORKS files open over here I'm gonna show some analysis of it later first I'm gonna go to a short uh, presentation where I show the equations that I'm gonna use so there's a force, a fluctuating force on a machine and via a spring and a damper is causing a fluctuating force on the floor and here you see the free body diagram of that, so this is the, the force on the floor and this is the free body diagram of the mass uh, free body diagram is simple, just erase all springs and dampers and everything that can deliver a force and replace it by an arrow with a corresponding name of the force, so this is the spring force and this is the damper force and then when creating the free body diagram it's a uh, simple, just add all blue arrows which is the sum of all forces and put it equal to the red arrow in this case which is the uh, kinem kinematic schedule, so sum of all forces is uh, equal to mass times acceleration. You see the formulas written down, uh, these two formulas lead to this formula and then when doing the Laplace transform, which is uh, actually quite complex when looking at the mass, but uh, here I can use a simple trick, just uh, replace every dot above a variable by an S so, as mentioned, there's a lot of complex mathematics going on behind that, but uh, for a, a straight-up uh, differential equation, that's the easy way of doing the Laplace transform. And then I get a, a transfer function, which is output divided by input, which is the force on the floor divided by the force on the mass, for example, a machine. And when using all these equations, we get this transfer function. So I've plotted a few of those values in MATLAB. Uh, the commands will be on the next page, the MATLAB commands that you can use. There's also free apps to plot uh, both diagrams and also you can uh, do it on some online websites. But if you have MATLAB, uh, it's probably the most convenient tool to do that. So I plotted here for a spring mass of 500 newton per meter and a mass of 1 kilogram. And here I put the MATLAB command of the, the transfer function for damping of 5 Newton per meter per second. So this is what I'm going to analyze in SolidWorks. It's with SolidWorks Motion and you can download the files as mentioned. And here I put the three values that correspond to the analyses that are in the file. So let's have a look at the lowest frequency as the first. In this case the transfer function is 1, which means that the force of the machine will be transferred directly to the force on the floor. And that's what you can see when I take a low frequency and I press play over here the, the speed is a quarter speed that I that I plotted in you can see it here, just so pay attention to that and when using a low force or a low frequency and then I can replay it and activate the spring so you see the spring but you don't see the damper but it's inside the spring and when you have a, a low frequency the, the mass acceleration has less effect and also the damping has lef less effect because the speed is low and the acceleration is low as well so the the spring is the the most important factor at low frequencies and that's why the force on the mass is exactly the force on the floor and now when I switch back to the frequency diagram here I see the natural frequency here you see the calculation of it the natural frequency is the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass which is 500 divided by 1 in this case so it's 22.4 radians per second. This scale is ro logarithmical, so here I've got 10, here I've got 20, so here I've got 22 at this line. And the corresponding SOLIDWORKS frequency analysis is here. And I can have a look at the force. So you, you see the frequency is 3.56 hertz, which is 22.4 radians per second, so pay attention to those unit conversions. And now I can uh, run this simulation, in this case at a tenth of a speed, because uh, the frequency is higher, it's less easy to see at uh, these high speeds, so I have to uh, decrease the speed. 
as you can see I've done that over here and now I'm exactly in the the natural frequency of this this motion analyzer so you see here the force is continuing to to grow and if the damping would be zero it would be growing until the construction would break but the damping is not zero in this case so when I switch back to the graph the frequency graph you see that this is in the natural frequency and then we've got the, the maximum amount of movement that is caused so I can see here that the force on the floor should be four and a half times the force that is uh, put on the machine so the maximum force in this case is uh, 22.7 uh, 22.7 Newton and when I put it look at the input force which is fluctuating and it's 5 Newton so 5 times 4.5 is indeed uh, very close to 22.7 so it's 22.5 but you cannot measure that amount of accuracy in this graph right away so this uh, this seems to be very accurate so uh, this is the, the uh, maximum a response that you get from the system right in the natural frequency and then I can go to the last analysis which is at a, a bit of a higher frequency and in that case the maximum phase shift is reached so I've got a plot of that as well here there's this motion analysis the frequency is higher again so there's more fluctuations over here which means it's a bit harder to actually read those graphs but when I run this analysis, run the simulation again at a, a tenth of the speed because otherwise uh, it would be hard to see anything of this simulation and now when I open a window just to be able to have a look on those graphs I can see that the phase shift is a maximum because when this is at the top when this graph of the force, the input force is at the top this graph of the force on the floor is almost at its bottom so almost at its lowest point so that means almost a phase shift of 180 degrees so you can you can see that by just putting a window right next to it almost a phase shift of 180 degrees and I can see that in this phase diagram over here so on the top graph we have the the absolute uh, value of the output divided by the input and on the lower graph we have the phase shift which you can also analyze with SOLIDWORKS motion. So that was what I wanted to tell about active vibration damping. Thanks for watching.